All right, a large government ministries. Oh, this is the module that basically anything goes. I remember. Yes, now I have to get the exam report for this or else I will. All right, a large government ministry stores sensitive personal information on its computer system. The ministry was advised by an information technology consultant to examine the security of the computer system, conduct a risk analysis, and devise a plan to reduce the risk. All right. The risk analysis revealed areas of potential threats to the company's computer systems. Yay, thanks. Natural disasters, employees, data errors, and hardware. For three of the threats listed above, state how it might be a threat to the company. Natural disasters will damage the hardware. Employees will leak sensitive data leak sensitive data data errors that will cause wrong wrong decisions to be made hardware how hardware is a threat it can fail for example a hard drive okay failure of hardware will be a threat there should be no issues there. Were there any? No, no there won't. A countermeasure explaining how the countermeasure could minimize the threat. So we have to state for each one of them. So natural disaster would damage the hardware. Countermeasure would be a fireproof cabinet. Hurricane slash flooding countermeasure will be elevate the servers so they do not get wet ha yeah I cannot flood in will damage hardware so clearly you'll elevate the server and so that it don't get wet. Um, employees could leak sensitive data. So you want to say that um, you could restrict access to certain files so that they cannot be shared easily data errors um you will do um Alright, I'm assuming that they want verification and validation because that's the only thing that has fixed data errors. If the data are going wrong, verification and validation is the only way you could avoid that. Verification and validation techniques can be employed. Yeah, you could probably buy example for that. Hardware, um, put in, put a backup system in place no backups i'm gonna have that they need to have a this one is the one where i need to have like a software a hardware replacement policy even though that no one is syllabus that's the common sense put a hardware replacement policy in place so old hardware doesn't 
get to feel I don't know I don't know the he has to make it easier for people who may may not be computer literate because we're not profiling what are problems but things that we are destined to solve we could we could solve that problem by actually you know the government official has come and check the kiosk once a week but you could go and put in whatever information you want and then they will come and check the information and see what is what and then if they need to go and make a trip into the into the um the the community to double check everything then they'll validate it and they go back so once a week they actually update any information but the information going into the kiosk via the people so therefore the process of um putting any information is short and you don't have to spend two days now anymore they can just go and read all the information from the files and validate which ones need to get validated and then go back home Malware via the internet poses the biggest threat um, to the security of computer systems and files. These malicious programs act blah blah blah. Other than viruses, there are two types of malware, bots and worms. Those are usually the straightforward answers. Not really much issue there. Um, you can get Trojans too. T-R-O-J-N-S. Trojans. Um, what else were there? Are there any others? No. Yeah, that's cool. The single between viruses and each of the types of malware identified above. Okay. Viruses tamper with or destroy files, wounds, exploit. Openings to allow other malware in into the system. Um, Trojans, um, fake, legitimate programs, and Unleash other malware. Oh no, okay, distinguish between. So then we have to say Worms exploit opens a malware in the system. They do not touch files. Right, so that's to show that our virus deals with files, Worms go deal with files, Trojans allow other programs. Um, allows them to unleash other malware covertly then they die <laughs> then they leave they don't do anything trojans just like he has burned them after discuss three different precautionary measures that a company could use to combat malware one an antivirus software can be installed and updated regularly All right so because there's three marks you're looking for you basically have to say antivirus install it and make sure it updated regularly because if it's not updated regularly then you really ain't going to go too far two to be uh, install a firewall that would 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 block harmful traffic from entering the network. I basically throw in words at the paper because this thing's supposed to be with two marks. So you really had to hit them with all that you have. Because the discuss here. 
I thought it was going to be like a stretch, but was it was. Alright. But it was generally well done by many candidates, so it will identify and look at three different progression measures that could be used to come up with the way. A few candidates simply insert three measures and didn't go in depth to explain them. Also, in some instances, candidates point different things of progression measures, for example, anti malware, anti pop up, anti blocker. Some candidates are not able to distinguish between a firewall and an antivirus. But we do have firewall and antivirus. What is our third? Third measure to combat malware. I guess you'll have to put the one with the users, you know, because that's the most logical one. Don't allow users to install any unverified programs. As they could be infected with viruses. Yeah. Yeah, we could take that. I'd explain fully one mechanism on um, an organization could employ that would govern the actions of its employees regarding the use of its computer systems and to protect the systems from potential internal threats. A uh, user policy. Yeah, they'll put um, a user policy. User policy that would clearly state the things a user should and should not do while holding them accountable for their actions. High content here, yeah. right? Cool. So you can say user policy or internet usage policy or computer usage policy. Once you add the word policy, it should be cool. Um, all right, identify three different types of works that may be considered intellectual property. Let's go music, painting. No, painting is not an intellectual property. Painting is a copyrightable property. Software. And, um, actually, and here what I have in the exam. If you can just give the medium vehicle such as literature, CD, and DVD. Yeah. Okay, so, so music, software, art, and um, an invention. Yeah. Invention is one mine. Cannot remember. But we leave that there. Those two, those, those should work. Explain each of the following pairs of terms stating one similarity other than forms of intellectual property and one difference between each pair. Whoa. Alright, so copyright is uh so copyright protects the authorship of something. while a patent protects the rights to a creation or invention. Example, a book versus a spoon. So a copyright is usually written stuff. Publish or unpublished, and our patent is applied to invention. 
Right, so our patent now. Put that up on one similarity and one difference. Hmm. Okay, scratch that. Let's write this a different way. Just now, uh, this answer not sitting well with me. Similarity. They both protect something. Other than forms of intellectual property. What's that? They say other than forms of intellectual property. Mm. All three of them you could financially profit off of them. All three of them, somebody has to. Um, approve I know the difference is that patent does only last a particular amount of time similarity I gotta put that yes because you know wonderful examiner's report has nothing to say anything few candidates were able to adequately account for a similarity and a difference between the peers I would love to see what the answer for this is. Love. Similarity. Both have to be authorized by a governing body. B difference. Copyright is forever patent is finite. Patent and a trademark similarity. Those two are similar, that not similar to our copyright. Or you can be sued because of it. Okay, no, you can't. Legal repercussions. No, they both, they both, they are both design based. They are both design based. Yeah, okay. Difference patents TNTS can be sold or licensed, and a trademark cannot. But I mean, if somebody wants to buy one Nike, they could buy it over, and you buy the trademark too. I good, I real good. Wherever you're right there, just tell yourself this question's stupid. Alright, identify two things. Alright, Jones submitted a research paper to a professor after reading the paper the professor accused of plagiarism. Identify two things that she could have done in a paper that will let down she could have copied and pasted um, more than how much pages it could take copied and pasted a large amount of text from a book Example, more than 10%. And June could have also cited quotes. No, put quotes without citing them. Used quotes without citing them. Yeah. 
three possible consequences for June. What do they do to you? Well, one, you would fail. Two, you could um, get expelled. And three, what will be the third one? You get blacklisted. As a bad student and never able to go into another institution. Yeah. Any questions there? No. Microchips, computers, and application software are being used to meet the needs of individuals. Explain two ways in which technology can help persons who are either visually impaired or without limbs. In your response, clearly state what the technology enables the persons to do and how they are able to do it. Wow. Okay. Visually impaired. We could have... um. Audio narration, a visually impaired person would be able to navigate a user interface. with the help of an audio assistant reading out the user, user interface elements. Did we answer the question? Did we clearly say what the technology enables them to do? Yes, they're able to navigate and how it reads out the user interface elements. Alright, cool. Two, person without limbs. What the technology enables them to do is cool. How are they able to do it? Are you going to explain your prosthetic limb? <laughs> <laughs> how how they control any prosthetic limb with technology because normal prosthetic limbs they are just mechanical you put them on and you you, you move with it so yeah voice activation may be better um <laughs> the <laughs> the what's called this thing like the persons can see what they want to be done and the computer would respond by carrying out the task requested example google assistant alexa siri and let's not forget cortana which is used right. Cortana is made it steer to start up Windows. After that, you just meet Cortana and move on with life. They used to have it on in Nokia phones, the Windows phones. Yep, used to. Rip, let's pour out one. Yeah, so that's the answers that they're looking for. Um, there are one, there, there is a technology where there's implant things in your brain, but I really, if you want to write down that, it will poke some <laughs> spokes in your brain and neuron yeah, activity 
and tiny we, electrons. Yep. Um, and the electrons will be transmitted to the mechanical arms. They can't tell it wrong because it's real, but I want to believe that they're looking for these two because they specifically said without um, visually impaired or without limbs. So that is what they're looking for. Well, the microchips are inside for the audio narration to go. It had to do processing or something like that. So yeah, they will take the microchip in your head, I guess. You know. <laughs> why? Why not? Because there are no wrong answers for this. You could literally say anything, and when you Google it, you realize somebody did it. So 